In my entire racing career, real or fake, I have never once raced a manual transmission. And I knew that I should, because it would give me big boy points, but I just never have. Until today, all that changes. What you're about to see is the greatest racing you've ever witnessed. You're not looking at it right now. What you're looking at is something that happened to me in an online lobby, and I got mad about it. But anyway, uh, go. Here we are in Bahrain for the first race of my Formula 2 manual racing career getting a great start off of Liam Lawson in his Red Bull liveried car and me in my orange MP something car. I'm not exactly sure what it is. Getting a great launch. The AI never really gets good launches and I'm not exactly sure why. They just kind of don't but I'm not going to complain So because it's like really easy for me to get a gap. So, you know, take what you can. Going through the race, still lap one, what the highlights didn't show is that I had gone off back in the back of the screen there and they didn't show that but i'd gone off dropping down to fourth instead of first i'd gotten a pass before the safety car came out which is that amg something something mercedes hashtag blessed safety car I'm trying to get my tires warmed up i do appear to be doing it a bit aggressively but you know what works works MP Motorsport, as you can see right there, is the team name. You can see the super effectiveness of warming your tires aggressively. After the restart, lunging down the inside, I'm not sure who this is, Porsche? Theo Porsche, I believe his name is. Just an absolute lunge down the inside. I didn't make a stick, but it was good enough to get him off his line so that I could get a run going into turn three or four. I'm not sure which one it is, but the next turn. As you can see, squeezing him a little bit. Nothing, nothing. A little hard racing. Can't explain for. On to lap eight of 11, up into second place, chasing down Liam Lawson. I lunge down the inside, but it turns out being way too much. Thank you, EA, for not showing my last second overtake. So here we are in Jeddah, a very tight technical track, one of my weaker tracks, if I'm being honest, but starting in P10 and getting a pretty good launch, I'd say, from 10 to 7th, barreling into the first corner. Nice little left-right chicane as D Snuts moves up into seventh place. Side-by-side -side action, kind of scary, but you know, whatever. Big boy balls. Up into P6 on Mr. Vips. Might have been some contact, but oh well. Going way wide, and then ended up losing wing which is something you'll see many times during these Jetta races. I lose so many wings, it's not even funny. Going through the first chicane, little bump. Little bump draft and ended up diving down the middle, down the inside, to get this move done. Moving up into P5, past Logan Sargent. Little wall tap there. Moving on to lap five, going through here. And just a bit more damage, just tapping that wall a bit much. You can see the end caps on the front spoiler are just gone. On to lap six, up into P4. Barreling down into, this is the last corner. Up into P3, I guess. They're not showing any overtakes, but Going through into this last corner, I got, I've gotten a multiple overtakes done. As you see right there with the red hot brakes. Thank you, EA, for once again not showing my overtake. 
onto the final lap chasing down Mr. Hogger and D. Snuts goes to win the race. Now moving on into the actual race, which apparently what we just saw was the sprint race. So this is two laps longer, real big difference there. But here you can see I'm just starting to push what's possible with the launches. I didn't really know the full extent of it, but you'll see later on how really how hard you can push these launches. Going through the first two corners, easy peasy like butter with Liam Lawson trailing behind. Really just hugging that wall through this corner, which is something you kind of shouldn't do. You need to go out a little bit more, but I didn't. Once again, hugging that corner into lap three, doing a much better job on the exit until I hit the wall. Thankfully, no damage. Until I hit the wall a second time, which did get damage. And now you can see once again, both end caps on the front splitter are gone. Wow, they're really just showing this one corner on the highlights. That's weird, but okay. Onto lap five, going into the last corner. After the pit stop, as you can see now, I'm on the mediums as that pure focus and determination as I tap the wall. Lap seven, once again, back into first place. Everybody else had pitted, did a bit of an early pit, as now the front right wing is just completely gone. Well, mostly gone. A very lonely race. As you can see, only the bottom portion of the front right splitter is left. I'd built up quite the gap, and now Mr. Lawson was running down and closing that gap very quickly, partially due to my damage, but also due to overdriving the car, as I hit the wall again and just lose more splitter. Here we are at Spa, one of my favorite tracks, and this is the race and not the sprint, because in the sprint I had a, gotten a drive through penalty and then ended up just retiring the car. I wasn't, I was 30 seconds back of everybody else, it was not winnable. As you can see, fantastic launch, really starting to push what's possible, like push, push, really push what's possible with this launch. having a moment they're almost losing control of the car and having another moment here losing all that gap that I had built up and Liam Lawson was just chasing me down for this whole race coming through on the last lap He's right up my ass. I believe I had a penalty, which is why I really slowed down here, because he was going to win, so I'd let him cross the line first, even though he's a robot. Here at Imola, one of my least favorite tracks, just not a track that I enjoy. Some parts are fun, but most of them are not. A little bit of wheel spin there as I redline off the start. I'm not joking, I redlined dropped the clutch and just shifted straight into second and I disappeared. By the time I got here in the first corner, it was a two second gap. It was ridiculous. As you can see, they're going off. Uh, I wasn't exactly looking where I was going. I was texting and racing at the same time. Don't do that. Coming out of the pits here, onto mediums now instead of the super softs of before as the look of pure determination in my eyes through the halo.
Going on to lap 10 now, this was the point where everybody else had pitted, and I was back up in the front. I don't remember exactly how big the gap was to second place, Mr. Lawson, but it was quite big. That's what she said. Here at Monaco, probably, definitely, actually, my worst track, as I redlined the start, starting in 7th this time instead of 10. I'm not sure how the sprint starts work for Formula 2, but I'm just seeing what happens. As I get this beautiful 100% clean and not at all dangerous or illegal move done, moving myself up into fourth place behind Hughes. And something that I ended up doing quite a lot through these two Monaco races was pretty much metaphorically eating the ass of the person in front of me and just riding their bumper all the way through those corners as I pass Mr. Hughes for third place. Once again, just doing the same exact thing, just riding the bumper of the person in front of me. As you can see, there a little bit of wing damage from the lap before, moving on into second place, side by side through here, and wedging him wide just off the line. So here, Mr. Iwasa, Iwasa, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but after the move on second place, I had about a two and a half, three second gap, and I believe here was about, here lap seven was probably the closest it was ever at. It was probably at maybe six tenths of a second, seven tenths of a second, but other than that, it was never, ever really close. Like, yeah, here, even on the last lap, it was, it was way way big and I wasn't able to get it moved on as I go incredibly deep out of the range of the camera through the bus stop chicane coming in to get second place now I am not one to toot my own horn unless it's called for but this was probably the greatest race I've ever done in my life this ended up having to be a two strop strategy because of how worn the tires are. There's not as much tire allocation in Formula 2 as there is in Formula 1. I think I only have like five sets of tires for the entire weekend, not including wet tires. But as you see here, already in lap four, way down in 22nd place after getting into second after the first corner. Side by side through the bus stop chicane, moving myself into 21st place with nine laps left. absolutely just dive bombing here not a really a place you should probably try and overtake but i did it anyway because desperate times call for desperate measures i suppose as i switch out to the inside line past mr sergeant after a couple of people had pitted you are required to do one pit stop on, in the races, not so much in the sprints. Now, everybody had pitted, and I was on the still on the first stint, but everybody had pitted after me, so I was able to get past them. But I still had to do one more pit, which was coming up, I believe, on this lap. So I tried on my in lap really hard to just push as hard as I could, but still, as you see back there, Mr. Lawson, Liam Lawson, was firmly up my ass. Once again, lap 14, back in 10th place after the second stop. Just absolutely dive bombing into the pool hairpin. Not really something you should do, but again, desperate times call for desperate measures. What do you know, sniffing the ass of the person in front of me and switching to the inside. 